Today we're discussing some of the lesser known features and tricks of the Xcode simulator. We're talking about the new toolbar in Xcode 12, changing the simulator environments, slow animations, and then later in the video we get to the hidden ones. And, and I call them hidden because you have to open up the terminal, enter some you know, command line stuff to get them, but that's things like you know customizing the status bar, right? If you wanted a very specific time on your simulator, maybe you wanted your battery to show 21%, stuff like that. But before we dive in, let's hear from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. Dev Mountain is an in-person coding and design bootcamp that offers housing at no extra cost for full-time immersive students. Now, if you know my story, I myself am a bootcamp grad. It was part of the process to help launch my iOS developer career, which I'm going on year five now in this wonderful profession. But aside from their iOS development program, Dev Mountain also offers programs in web development, software QA, and UX design. They even have a career services team to help you with job placement and financing options are available. And Dev Mountain loves hearing from my viewers. So if you or someone you know is ready to start this journey into iOS development, be sure to check out the link in the description. All right, back to the video. So here I just pulled up a project. It is the GitHub followers app. If you're interested in this, this is what I teach in the course. You can check it out, link in the description, but you can pull up any app you've built that will run in the simulator to, to test this stuff out. And another thing of note, uh, a lot of the stuff comes from the WWDC talk, Becoming a Simulator Pro. I'm gonna link to that in the description as well. So if you wanna take an even deeper dive into that stuff, check that out. All right, let's kick things off here with the toolbar, as you can see up here at the top. Now, the new thing here is we got these icons in the upper right, uh, the camera, that's a screenshot uh, real quick. So basically what uh, Xcode did, well, I'm sorry, if you right click the screenshot, you get some options, save to desktop, save to copy to clipboard, whatever. If you don't do anything, it'll automatically save to your desktop. As you can see, it'll go away here in a little bit. So that screenshot is now on my desktop. Um, so anyway, basically what, what Apple did was they put a lot of the uh, convenient stuff up in the toolbar. Uh, so you can go to the home screen here, click on GitHub followers, uh, you can rotate, you know, keep rotating it around, whoops. You know, keep rotating it around, the rotate button moves on you. Now you could do command right and left, you know, to do that as well, but uh, you know, it is nice they put that in the toolbar. If you're so used to using the keyboard shortcuts, that's still probably gonna be faster, but again, it's nice to see it right there too. Next, let's talk about the iPad uh, mouse capture. Now I do have an iPad simulator up. Uh, I don't have an iPad app that I've built that will work with this. So we're just gonna use the news app. So if you open that up on an Xcode simulator, uh, you'll see these icons here. This is the capture cursor icon and then the capture keyboard. Basically what this does now, I'm gonna capture pointer, is now in the I iPad app, you can see my, my pointer here. This is how you test out the new uh, iPad pointer stuff. So if you're building an iPad app and you wanna test out your, your cursor functionality, this is how you would do it. And you can make sure you see if, as I hover this icon in the upper left, let's click on a story. Uh, and if I go you know, back in this icon, you can just basically test out your, your cursor behavior to make sure it's working uh, as you want. Same thing with keyboard shortcuts. Uh, if you have those for your apps, this is how you would test that by capturing the keyboard. And you'll notice when I move my cursor around, like I can't leave the iPad. Like if I wanted to type an Xcode, I can't because we're testing that. So in order to get out of your, your keyboard and cursor capture, just hit the escape key and now you're back to the normal uh, mouse. So anyway, great new way to test the new iPad cursor functionality uh, within this simulator. Next, let's talk about full screen mode in the simulator. You'll notice I have my simulator just floating up top. I'm sure this is how many of you work as well. This is just the old habit. Well, now the simulator in Xcode can go full screen. I used to, you know, drag, you know, here, take my simulator, you know, put that here, and then just work side by side. It's kind of the old way to do it. Now, if you uh, click on Xcode and hover over the green expand, you can do tile window to the left and then uh, tile window here on the uh, simulator. And you can adjust the window size here too. As you can see, I can make that small off to the right. And now I can be working in Xcode full screen and my simulator is full screen as well. So it's always up. You're not kind of juggling windows. So now let's talk about slow animations. This is always a, a fun one here. So make sure you have the iPad Pro window selected. And if you go to debug up here in the uh, menu bar, you'll see slow animations. Now watching the simulator when I type here, well, first of all, you see that slow animation for the search bar. But what you're about to see is UI collection view diffable data source in action as it automatically animates the collection view. Again, uh, link in the description to the take home project course if you're interested in building this. But if I just start typing D, uh, you can see how the slow animation. So the reason why you would do this is if maybe you built an animation and it's not quite working right, and, or you just wanna see what's going on, turn on slow animations uh, and you can see uh, this here. So the DA, turn caps lock on by accident. And there you go, and there's Gene. Uh, so now let's, uh, if you delete all that, you can see it all come back. So again, that's slow animations and I'll hit cancel. You can see that come back. 
And if I hit back, you can see that it slowly goes back. So again, that's slow animation, so you can really debug your animations. And the one thing you want to remember is to turn them off, uh, debug slow animations, because sometimes you'll forget to turn it off and then your app's going all slow. Yeah, it's annoying. So let's get back to the uh, screen we're on here. And let's click on, we'll click on Jason. He's the, he's the guinea pig I always use all the time. So now we're gonna talk about uh, environment overrides. So with your simulator running, you'll have this icon right here, these switches. And if you pull this up, you can uh, adjust the appearance. You can go dark mode, light mode. We'll, we'll talk about a keyboard shortcut for that uh, later, but you can do it this way as well. Uh, dynamic type. You can test to see how well your app uh, responds in real time to dynamic text. So watch, watch the simulator on the left as I scroll down to really, really small text. So you can see we're, we're adopting dynamic type here. Uh, and then if I go all the way up to extra big, it's like, whoa, you can see that, okay, when it's the super, super large, maybe the app could use some work, um, you know, for that extra, extra large text. And then if you go down to, you know, I guess the default there. Uh, same thing with accessibility features, uh, you know, bold text, you can test it out. Now, admittedly, this app that I have up is not full-blown accessibility ready. It was just the take-home project sample app, um, but you can test out your accessibility stuff uh, here uh, as well. So let's turn all this off, go back, get rid of environmental overrides, we're done. Now, again, in the simulator, if you do Command-Shift-A, that's how you get to dark mode, light mode real quick. Command-Shift-A, uh, so if you wanna test out light and dark mode quickly, that's how you do it. So for the size of the simulator, you may be familiar, right? You can grab the corner, shrink it, make it big, move it around, sure. Um, there's also a way to get like preset sizes. So if you go to window, you see these, you know, physical size, point accurate, pixel accurate, fit screen. Fit screen is kind of what I have now. So it's big so you can see it. But what I like to do when I'm actually building the app is I like to go into uh, physical size. Now it's gonna look pretty small on the screen right now, but if what I'm looking at, if I were to hold up an iPhone right to that, uh, that's going to be the actual size uh, of the iPhone. So that's what physical size will do of any device you have on there. Um, I like to do that to just really get a feel for what the app is like in real life if I don't, if I can't run it on my device. All right, so now let's get into the uh, command line stuff. So I'm going to move this over here, make some room for the command line. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is recording a video. Many ask how I make these videos that you see here for my courses where I have like, you know, the device coming in and the video is playing. Um, well, I used to, literally run the app on my device, open up QuickTime, record a video, export that video, edit, like it was a pain. Well, once I saw this WWDC session that showed me this, uh, you can record videos right from the simulator. So that's gonna cut out uh, a lot of steps. So here's how you do that. So open up terminal, XC run sim a cuddle. So S-I-M-C-T-L, this is all the simulator stuff. You'll hear it referred to as sim cuddle most of the time. There's, there's a debate on how to pronounce it, I guess. Uh, but then you can do IO booted uh, record video this is the command. And now here's the trick. This is what you want to name your file. So you need to make sure you name it something that doesn't exist uh, already. So uh, I've kind of run this test a few times to make sure this works. So you're going to get a weird name here. Um, but we're going to do GH uh, test one. Uh, and you got to say .mp4 or, or whatever file extension. So now here's the trick. I haven't hit return or enter yet because as soon as I do that, it's going to start recording the video. And when you want to stop the video, you hit control C to stop the video just so you can, you know, adjust your timing. And don't worry if you mess it up, you can open up the video in quick time, trim off the end, trim off the beginning uh, to dial it in. But as soon as I hit return, we are recording. So now if I go to my iPhone Pro simulator, let's scroll, scroll, scroll. Cool. Let's find somebody. iCoder. Cool done and go back to my uh, terminal, hit control C. Now we stopped it. So now if I do command space, we're gonna search for GH test dash one MP4, there it is, hit return. And now you can see, I'll move it off of my face here. Now we have the video here uh, of what I just did, right? You saw me scroll down a little bit. There you go, yada, yada. Cool, there's the video. So I just recorded the video right off my simulator. And then like I said, this is what I, I take this video, I drop it, the program I use is called Rotato. Drop it into Rotato, I got my device all good to go. Uh, so that is how you record video right from the command line on the simulator, very useful. Now let's talk about changing the status bar, right? This is things like making it a very specific time, changing your Wi-Fi signal, your battery level, stuff like that. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and type it out real quick and you're probably gonna be wondering like, how do I know all those commands? I'm gonna show you where you can see the list of commands so you can tweak it uh, yourself, but click on terminal there, uh, XC run, and they all start with this, sim cuddle. Uh, now you do status underscore bar, booted and then override and now here's where you start overriding you know the specific stuff for example dash dash time pretty self-explanatory we're gonna do four 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 little jay-z reference there let's let's have like a weak cell service in, in wi-fi right we're, we're really struggling now so you can do wi-fi bars i'll uh, say one 
dash dash cellular bars, make that one as well. And then, you know, dash dash battery level, we're really struggling, uh, is eight. So now watch my simulator here on the right. You're gonna see my battery level drop to eight. You're gonna see my Wi-Fi signal go down, my, my cell bars and my time change, right? So let me hit return here. There you go, look, we're struggling on the battery. No network, I mean like life's rough right now for us. So you can see that's how you can update the status bar. And again, the use case for this would be if you have a very specific screenshot uh, or the state of your app that you wanna showcase, uh, this is how you can customize all that. Now be careful with this though, because once you've done this, like that's what your, your simulator is gonna do. So you probably wanna clear this at some point. So I'm gonna hit up to go to the last command and I'm just gonna start deleting. Uh, and you can do all the way back to uh, XC run, sim cuddle, status bar, booted, and then you just type clear, hit return. And you can see uh, on my simulator, we got full battery, full Wi-Fi, and now the time is 157, which is the current time. So I just threw a lot of tips and tricks at you. Hopefully you found some of it useful. If you like my teaching style, my presentation style, like I mentioned earlier, started creating my own courses, check out the link uh, down below. See you in the next video.